Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Joni Young and I'm going to show you all step by step how to paint water. Now today this has just got gentle movement in the water. I'll be doing a series of tutorials for different types of water and these videos are going to be just really getting in depth on brush stroke, shading and breaking it down into a simple way so it's not intimidating for you guys and you really understand more about the process and actually how easy it is to paint realistic looking water. I'm going to just go over the colors quickly here with you guys. Of course you can use any other shades of what I've got here today. Um, so I'm going with more of, I want to create a little bit more depth and have it a little bit darker. So I've chosen a little bit of Mars Black just for my darkest shadows, some Sap Green, Ultramarine Blue, I've got Titanium White, and I've also got a little bit of my Neon Yellow Warm for the little diamonds and sunlight on the water. Um, so I'm going to just use one of my large blending brushes. This one is a number 50, but you can just pick any large brush that you have. What I want to do is just cover the entire canvas first, and I'm going to just get my brush a little bit wet. Getting it wet really helps to spread that paint around. I'm also going to take a little bit of the water on my brush and pull it over the canvas just to make it a little bit damp. Wetting the canvas slightly prior to adding your paint will help you out tremendously with blending your acrylics. Okay, so you can see it's not dripping, it's just a little bit damp to the touch. Now before that can dry, let's go ahead and take our blue and a little bit of green. So I'm not gonna mix them on the palette to make one color. I'm gonna take a little scoop of each and I'm just gonna start covering the canvas, letting it blend out into lighter and darker tones, some areas a little bit more green. This just helps to really make your water look a lot more natural. So depending on how much water you add to your brush or the canvas prior, that will determine uh, the transparency of the paint that you're adding. So if it's too thinned out and you don't see any color, it's just really, really pale, then you know you've got too much water. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more of my blue now a little bit of green and I'm just gonna start to pull over and brush in some areas to make it a little bit thicker. Just by doing this, we're starting to create the first touches of our shadows and depth. You can also turn your brush this way. And what I wanna do next is take another brush. Now this time I'm going to be using a flat brush. There are a few different brushes you can use for this. It's what really whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, you can use a smaller filbert brush. You can also use an angle brush, uh, a round brush, but for this uh, specific step I'm just going to show you how to do this with a flat brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet and I'm just going to take some white now with a little bit of that blue. Now, if your canvas is dry, if the paint is drying really quick, you can still do this. It doesn't matter. It's going to look a little bit uh, softer and creamier looking if you paint wet on wet, but you don't, it, there's no rule with this. You don't have to make sure that it's dry and you don't have to um, paint wet on wet but you'll be able to see as it dries how it kind of changes the brush stroke. 
and I'm just going to start going in around the water here, pulling. few little lines like this and it's already starting to look a little more like water. These are simple brush strokes. We're not doing anything fancy here. So sometimes I'm making these lines a little bit skinnier. Sometimes I'm going to make them a little bit longer. Okay, easy enough. Now we can start coming in with a little bit more. And I'm going to add it. I'm going to load my brush a little differently this time. I'm going to just kind of pull and mainly focus on adding it to the end of my brush here. So I've got a little ridge of paint on the tip of my brush. And what I'm going to start doing is creating little little lines that are starting to, starting to scoop up. So you can just kind of pull and depend on how, this is gonna determine how much movement you want in your water with the um, amount of scoop. The, so if you exaggerate your scoop more, then we're gonna create more movement that brings the water up and we get more um, action in the water. So you control what type of water you want by the highlights here that you're going to add okay and also the shadows the shadows and the highlights complement one another And see how I'm kind of staggering it, right? And you can see the under painting and around all these little lines. And as we get down here, I'm going to create a little bit more movement. These ones that are tighter together and a little bit uh, flatter will give us a little bit of perspective and feel like we're down here and that's further away. You can also sometimes add little swirls like this, where you kind of travel around with your brush and make little tight. Let me try that again with a little bit more paint. So you'll pull, not zigzag, sort of zigzag, but it's rounded. a rounded type of a zigzag, I guess you could say. I'm going to just take a second here to rinse out all the paint that's in my brush starting to dry. And now I'm going to go in, take a little bit more. This time I'm going to add a little bit of green. A little bit of blue. And it doesn't matter how much of each one you add, it's just preference. There's so many different shades of blue and green that you can choose for your water. And so now, coming here, to partially, maybe about just above halfway, let's say, down to the, down the canvas, above the halfway mark. I would say the half right, you know, you can eyeball the halfway mark. So let's just start right above there. 
And what I'm going to do is start coming up. And I'm push a little bit harder with my brush to make thicker lines. I'm going to bring it up into a peak like that. And then I'm going to come underneath. And I'm going to kind of layer this here, come over, sort of crisscross. Start here, go down, make this a little bit thicker. So we're going to get some more movement right there. And then I'm going to start from over here, come over, bring that down, slightly up and down. I'm going to pull down here, gently go over this. So you're going to need, once we come down here, we're going to start making these highlights a little wider and thicker than those, those skinny ones up there. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of my highlight, a little bit more white, be a little bit more generous with the white this time. Just slide in there and get it on the tip of your brush. And we're just going to sort of outline here, adding a few little lines. You can have a little bit of fun creating little patterns. That's what, that's how I look at painting water and that's what kind of draws me to painting it. I kind of have a thing about patterns when I see a, a pattern in the water I kind of want to I'm drawn to follow that pattern and I think it's fun to mimic it on a canvas with a brush again I'm just gonna slide in and if you go like that you might have a bit too much on your brush so you can kind of just thin it out by lightly dragging it across like that it all depends on how thick you want your painting to be once it dries. So I'm going to take a little bit more white there and then I'm going to bring another line there and crisscross. And now I'm going to be a little bit more generous with my blue and green. Mix that up. I'm going to add a little bit of lighter tones in here. Again, just following those little peaks. I'm going to add a little, little crisscross again here. So two things that I'm talking about a lot here are crisscrosses to add. And by doing that, really saves you the stress of trying to figure out where all these lines go and where and what it looks like. Just go every once in a while down here and go up and then add a crisscross somewhere. I 
a few skinnier lines and a few thicker lines. I'm going to use a smaller brush now. And I'm going to use, um, I can't find my small flat brush right now, but I'm going to show you how to do this with a filbert brush. So uh, everything I've done here, all these lines and patterns you can do with a filbert brush as well. You'll get a, you can make things pointy with a filbert brush. Uh, you can also create some softer rounded looking shadows and patterns and highlights in the water. So I'm not going to choose one or say one brush over the other is, is better than one another. They're both equally um, beneficial. Okay, what I want to do is take a little bit of my black, green, and blue. So I'm just going to make a really deep, dark color with some black. And the black is very, very overpowering, so you need only a little bit. So I'm just going to load my brush up here, and I'm going to start coming in. I'll start here on the bottom, so there's a highlight right here, and I really want to go right under that. And then start working it out of my brush. Make a little bit more paint. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the green as well. You don't have to paint this solid. You can have it look a little streaky like that in there. That's going to make it look even more natural. Get a little bit of water on my brush. That will really help too. So what you want to do is just add your shadows wherever you've got the highlights. Kind of want to determine how dramatic you want your water to look. Okay, so just go in and around all these areas. Adding just a little bit of water here to help thin the paint out a bit. And I'm using the same brush strokes as earlier. I'm just going around, kind of just weaving in and around all those highlights that we added earlier. Now you can go over them. You can keep changing your water as much as you want. Of course, you want to be careful that you're not covering up all of the green and blue and the main the main color of the water that you want. There's something so relaxing about painting water. That's why I have so many tutorials full of water. The water is very tranquil. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to add some extra highlights and um, 
little bit more delicate detail. So we're gonna use a liner brush. You can use any liner brush you want. I'm using a long one here and I'm getting it a little bit wet. I'm taking some white. A little bit of water, like I mentioned, really, really, really helps. So you just wanna make sure that your brush is loaded correctly and you just kind of twist and pull and drag and then you've got a little bit of paint on the tip of your brush that you wanna be using. So I'm gonna just start coming in here, adding little lines, long crisscrosses. I'm gonna build up some light. You can make some of them a little thicker. And if you're not sure where to add them, Focus on where you already have your light areas, but you don't have to necessarily go over all of them. As long as you've got a little bit of everything, you're not covering up and making it one solid color, it'll look just fine. What I like to do sometimes is kind of go up, a little bit more water on my brush. So I'll create these little gentle peaks. And then I'm gonna come down here. Just continue down here. Push and wiggle a little bit. And then I'm gonna pull, kind of make it a little rounded right in there. So you can make some of them a little edgier if you want and some of them rounded, one or the other or both. I like to add a little bit of both, have a mixture. You can also just kind of dry brush a little bit out like that. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take that little filbert brush again. Little filbert brush and I'll go in here while well, it's a little bit wet still. And I'll choose a few areas just to soften. It helps if you have the brush a little bit wet. I'm running out of a bit of white. I want to add a little bit more, say right down here. Thin, thin your paint out for this. A little goes a long way for creating these soft mid-tones in here. tinting my white with a little bit of that blue-green.
So again, I wanna mention that you can use any, following these steps and techniques and brush strokes, you can do this with any color you want your water to be. If you wanna do more like Caribbean, turquoise, phthalo blue, that will work. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit more black now. A few more, just the end of my brush here. Okay, and then just every once in a while, stand back and have a look and see how your how your painting is. And if at any time you feel like you need to take a break, if you're feeling frustrated, then it's probably time to take a break. I'm gonna add a few more lighter tones up here. We just got a little bit of that green in there hardly anything but it is a little bit see if I it, you think that it's just pure white but when I add it there next to the white you can see it's tinted I'm gonna come in here add some more highlights because acrylic paint dries darker so it's normal to go back and have to add more just want to show you guys how we can change the color of the water at this stage by adding a little bit of what well, in this case I'm going to add phthalo blue okay so with a clean brush we'll take a little bit of a little bit of white there and my phthalo and I'm going to start adding a little bit in here and we'll see how we can change this. And it'll start, to me, this, I love this color. I love incorporating phthalo into a lot of my paintings, especially water. I just think it's so pretty. And the reason why I'm doing this right now is so that you guys can see how you can add color when you think that it's too late. If you guys think it's too late, you're like, well, I should have done that from the beginning, but these are the colors I chose, so this is what I'm stuck with now. No, nope. you can always add acrylic paint is really forgiving, so it's so fun to do this too. Pick a color. You could use some um, phthalo green would be really pretty too, though I have to say taking a little bit of this blue and adding it over top of our sap green and ultramarine is gonna give you a phthalo green um, tone anyways. So I'm just gonna pick a few areas here. I'm not gonna think overly too much about where I want it. I'm just gonna add a little bit everywhere. Take a little bit of water on my brush. And I've got lots of highlights up here, so it's fine if I go over a few of them. By doing that, I'll be making some softer tones of this blue, so it'll just look like a filter but see how I'm leaving some parts green I like a little bit of all those colors take just a little bit of a bit more white 
little bit of green and with that blue make a shade of shade of turquoise here and I just want to add a little bit of light in this area okay, then I'm going to take some more white right now and go up here lifting that up a little bit Okay, so for the next step, I'm just gonna make sure my brush is real clean. For this next step, I'm gonna be using a number two round brush. You can use a liner brush uh, or any round brush that you want. We're gonna be adding the warm touches of highlights and sparkles on the water. So a very clean brush and just titanium white. And I just accidentally got a little bit of blue in there. I got to start over another area now. Okay, so just a little bit. I'm going to apply this for my highlights. It's nice to have a balance of cool tones and warm tones in your paintings. That's what adds a lot of life to them. See how pretty that looks? That pale, looks like a powder blue. Can thin it out in a few areas. I like to have some of my highlights to be a little bit brighter and thicker than others. So like some just less transparent, so I'll use more paint and I won't blend it out. Okay, then I'm gonna just start adding little dabs. I'm not gonna think too much about this, I'm just gonna Add those dabs and then just soften and you can even use your finger just gently go around in little circles you need kind of a fuzzy background for our stars our little diamonds I said stars because this is the same uh, approach we're gonna make them smaller and smaller and closer together it's the same approach and technique I use for making stars. We really are, we're adding little stars here on the water. I love it when you look at the water and it's just sparkling. It's like diamonds. So if you don't have a lot of paint on your brush, you can use that to just Kind of scumble around and make those fuzzy shapes. They're just little round blurs or little orbs at this point. And they're really going to show up where you have your darkest areas too. So you can uh, take note of that if you really want much more sparkle. I like to add a few everywhere though. So on my brightest areas, I'll just do a whole bunch of little dabs. And a little gentle scumble around here. A little bit more here.
you can play around with the color of your diamonds that you want to add in for your sparkles like you could tint your white with pink or orange I've got quite a few tutorials with uh, sparkles and diamonds on the water like this so have a look through my playlist Now you can continue making the little stars inside of these with a round brush, a small round brush, but I'm going to show you guys how I like to do it. And I use, uh, I got some new liner brushes in. I actually uh, wanted the finest ones that I could find. So I ordered nail art brushes. So I don't even know, it's so small. This is actually the first time I'm gonna be trying them out today, but I think this this size is appropriate. They're micro, micro mini liner brushes, and I got these um, in the nail art section from Amazon. If I can find the link again, um, well, I'm gonna try them out and I'll let you guys know if they're worth it. If I like these, then I'll leave a link below for them. But you can use any liner brush or a really small round brush you want something small right because what we're doing is really delicate here so i'm just going to get those colors again white and yellow and we're going to go inside each of them and just add a little star like that I like to go back in right after and add a little dab of white. I like to use titanium white because I just find it's the brightest and I can change the, it's a cool white, but I can change the temperature of it easily by uh, using a warm yellow. A little bit more here. So I'll just do somewhat of the same type of star and technique on these. You, you don't have to have every single one like a star, but I just think they look so pretty. But yeah, the ones that are back here, they can just be more little tiny dots and dabs closer together. That also helps to create a little bit of perspective and make it really interesting. I don't know, I just think it's such a nice touch to add these little sparkly diamonds on the water. It looks magical. Well, I'm liking this brush a lot so far. It's definitely giving me the small details. It's helping me create the small details that I want. Now you can also take a little bit more of the yellow and just with a bit of a dry brush and a little hint of that yellow you can add that over part of your stars and overlap it on the color next to it. And that'll also give you a nice added touch.
you guys are enjoying these a little bit more in-depth tutorials where I just focus on one or two things in great detail and really give you a thorough tutorial for them. And if you're feeling like you're just not getting it and you're trying and you're not knowing what's going on, all that is, is you need more practice. It's being frustrated and feeling like you're not getting anywhere is just a normal part of progressing. If you choose to stop at that point, then you're not going to get further, but if you push through, have determination, and you will, that determination will naturally be there if you love what you're doing and, and you just really want to get better and improve your skills. You'll keep going. And I'm here. I'm here for you guys. We're not in the same, you know, physically in the same room together, but I am here in spirit cheering you guys on. Don't give up. It's worth it to keep going. I'm just going to add a few little lines again and highlights with my gold here. It's like liquid gold we're making. It's such a pretty color. Um, the paint I'm using for this neon yellow warm is by Holbein. I think this water is looking pretty magical and I'm just about done. I'll be starting the next water tutorial right after this one. See that little bit of paint that I've got there? I'm going to use that and then I'm just going to tap, tap, tap. Down here, I want to add a little bit more warmth, a little bit more saturation. See how pretty that little hint of that yellow looks there? I think I can do, do this a little bit easier with, whoops, almost lost it, my little round brush. I can blend out a little bit better if I use my round brush. Not a lot of paint. See, I go in for the color and then I kind of work it out of my brush. So that leaves my brush a little bit dry and it'll make the, make the paint a lot easier to just sort of add a, a thin, transparent filter. So I did mention earlier that you could add pink, light touches of pinks and purples and oh you could just have all sorts of fun and I do that in some of my videos. You'll see me adding a bunch of different pastel colors to my little diamonds in the water. Make sure if you guys are enjoying these tutorials here on my channel that you pop that in the comments below and let me know then that gives me an idea of what types of tutorials to keep making for you guys these little ones down here. Hi 
today. So hopefully you guys learned a lot in this tutorial today and stay tuned for the next one. I've got a 16 by 20 canvas. You can use a smaller size if you want or whatever size canvas that you want. And I'm gonna be working on covering up the canvas with a number 50 filbert brush. You can also use any large brush, maybe one like this. It's just something big enough to cover the, the background with. Now the colors I'm gonna be using today only are titanium white, light blue violet, phthalo blue, and Mars black. I'm gonna start by getting the canvas a little bit wet. What this does is help make the canvas nice and slippery and it extends the paint a lot more. It makes it really easy to cover the canvas. So now that it's a little bit wet, I'm gonna take my blue with a little bit of black and start covering the entire canvas. See how much easier it spreads around where we have that water? So you're not going constantly to your palette for more paint. I wanna have some areas of the sky a little bit darker than others. This will really help to add some more dimension and add a little bit more water to my brush and some white now. I'm gonna use some blue violet down here on the bottom and just mix that in. Okay, and I'll come over and add those same colors, the blue violet, blue and black, and finish this up. A Little bit of water again on my brush. And use the rest of that blue violet with just a little bit of white and then just right here lighten up this area so the idea is just to have a few lighter spots in your background you can add yours anywhere you want they don't have to be exactly where mine are before beginning the shape of my cloud i'm going to choose right about here so not halfway down the canvas uh, about three quarters of the way down and i'm going to take more of my blue and my black and while this is still kind of wet, I'm just going to start pulling. This is going to be where we're going to have our darkest shadow on our cloud. Just a few lines like this. And if it's looking a little bit too black, then what you can do is just take a little bit of white and lighten it. So we just want to gently we're going to start to bring it back up more in this section here. Okay. okay, so now that this is all dry, we can choose a brush to start coming in with the shape of our clouds. And I'm going to be using a filbert brush. This one is a number nine, possibly a number 12, anything around between nine and 12. Uh, and of course, it depends on how big you want your clouds to be and how big your canvas is. So this is the appropriate size. And as I add a little bit more details, I'll go down in a few sizes to one of my smallest filbert brushes, but I'll show you that a little bit later on as we add uh, finishing touches and highlights on the clouds. But this is the one we're gonna start with. So I'm gonna take just some titanium white, and you guys can use any white you want, any blue you want, any black you want. And I love using the filbert brush for clouds because it's already got that round uh, end to it so that really makes it easy to get a poofy nice shape with all those little 
um, half circles to make it look kind of like bubbly and fluffy looking. Okay, so I'm going to start here at the top. And here you can see we've already, just by tapping, you can tap to make those shapes. Or you can start making little brush strokes like this. Going counterclockwise or clockwise, little half circles. You don't even have to take your brush off of the canvas. You can just keep traveling around with it. I'm going to make this the highest point of my cloud up here. And then I'm going to start bringing it out. Puffy, puffy little half circles and then bringing it back in. And start over here. I'm going to start adding a little bit more paint now. You could also use the end of your brush if you want to make a little bit more uneven looking shapes to your clouds. This is a nice way to do that rather than switching over to a little round brush or a liner brush. But I'm going to show you a few different brushes today to help to create details on, a, on clouds like this. So you don't want to skip forward. You want to watch everything throughout this whole video so you don't miss anything and you gain as much info and tips as you can. So I'm going to start working my way out here now. And then I'm going to bring it back in. A little bit more paint. Then I'm going to come over this dark line here. Just slightly over that. Okay, so this is the beginning stages of our cloud. I'm going to wash my brush off. It's a little bit damp, just from that bit of water. And I'm going to come right under here and start to just do the same brush stroke. I'm using the paint that I just applied to just soften. So I'm, I'm making it very transparent, very soft looking. We're using the dark base color that we use to paint the canvas with for our shadows. So all we're doing here is just thinking about the highlight. So that saves us the work of coming back in and adding shadows after you can if you want. Now I'm just going to come in with a little bit more white and I'm going to show you how we can start layering up. So we're going to leave a few spaces well, about an inch down from here. And then I'm going to start another layer. I'm not thinking about copying, following that same design, right? Or that same basic shape. I'm just going to make a different one here. And you hear that gentle sort of scrapey noise? It's a very, very light scumble or blending. It's as the, the paint and the water start to run out of my brush, my brush starts to dry a little bit and you can get a very nice soft blending this way. So this will give you some softer um, shades and layers within your clouds from your darkest shadows to your brightest highlights. It's important to have those mid-tones. So I'm gonna just keep layering here, sometimes using more white. And it's so simple. This is all you do to create a 3D looking cloud with that dark background and adding some highlights and then those gentle softer, thinner amounts of paint in between. Okay, so here I'm coming back in and I'm going to soften up some areas. brush up again. Start another layer. So you can bring it over 
And then you can start to kind of twirl around with your brush. Okay, and we're going to come down here. And add a light, thin, watered down layer. Gradually lightening this up one layer at a time. And I gotta tell you, it's really, really satisfying painting clouds on a dark canvas like this. You just get that instant pop because you have all those shadows. As soon as you add the highlights, it's right there. And it's, it's just really a satisfying way to paint. It looks like you've spent hours on it to build up and you haven't. So I'm hoping that you guys are gonna have a much easier time and get a little bit more excited about painting your clouds after watching this. And while it's fresh in your mind, after watching this, put it on again and start following along one step at a time. You can pause, stop the video in between and do the steps one at a time with me. And then once you've done that step, hit play on the video again and keep going. You don't have to follow along at the speed I'm going. I'm gonna brush down here a little bit and start to go across part of this dark, dark shadow here that we have. And I'm gonna come right in here and I'm gonna bring another layer, another cloud and some highlights up in here. Now I'm gonna wash my brush off, make sure it's still a little damp, right? And we're just, I've got a little bit too much water on my brush. Just soften, you wanna soften and get as close to you, close to that next out as you can. So it just is like ombre, right? Light to dark, gradually. And I'll take another little bit of white and I'll add just a little baby cloud right here. And then continue along with this one right here. I've got a little bit of blue in here, which is fine. We can mix up some of that black blues and then add a little bit. It's so pretty. And again, you can use any blue that you want. You can just add a little bit right down here, a little bit in here. This will give us a bit of a smoky look to some of the clouds. And then I'm just going to gently blend, sort of just smush around with my brush. And then soften, soften a little bit like that. Okay, I'll take a little bit more paint. Come in here and do the same thing. I'm gonna get right up to that white, gently, gently blend. Use whatever's left on my brush right here. Work that out. Now I'm gonna come in with my white. I haven't washed my brush off. And I'm going to start another layer right here. This one's going to come really close to these guys over here. And then start to layer up a little bit more. So, and if you lose the shape of your filbert, just kind of give it a quick little wiggle like that. And I like to apply the paint on the tip of the brush. That's really where I want to add these little peaks 
and my brightest highlights. Load my brush up. As the paint starts to dry, it's starting to look a little bit darker. So we need to come over and add a few more highlights. And it's so enjoyable that you don't even mind taking the extra time. You know you're in that good creative headspace when it really just doesn't feel like a challenge. Challenges are, are kind of fun too, don't get me wrong, but when you feel like you're just at one with a canvas and your brush, it's kind of like riding a bike, right? You just don't even think about it anymore, you're just going. And that's kind of how I feel when I'm painting. I feel like I'm going, my brush and I are on a little journey together. I'm going on an adventure. Okay, so I'm liking how this is looking. I want to add a little bit more of my blue. And I'm going to take a little bit more of my blue violet. Oh, and if you guys are curious, this is the blue violet I'm using. Uh, Liquitex Basics Acrylic. If you guys want to know more about the paints that I use and favorite brushes of mine, um, I have two brand new videos out that are really informative and I have a lot of links below those videos too where you can find those brushes and I go in depth with brush stroke similar to what I'm doing here. Um, those are with waterfalls and if you're on Patreon you get uh, exclusive um, content and videos that you won't see here on my channel. Um, so anyways, I'm going to take the blue with a little bit of black, both blues. I think they look really pretty together. They make a really gorgeous blue. And I'm going to start adding it down here. They're different temperatures, these blues, and that's why it starts to make the painting really come alive. with a little bit here on the tip of my brush holding my brush on an angle and kind of pushing on the edge see that gentle little push so pushing like this so maybe it's easier if I can hold it up here and I'll show you from this level pushing it so it's making it kind of flat on that end and all this does is give you a little bit more control with the width and the amount that you want to add. And I'll keep going right down here. a little bit darker. More blue, black, blues and black. Now water. Quite a bit of water on my brush for this. Then my violet. Now right where I left off, I'm going to gently work that up while the paint and the canvas is still wet, right? And then you get a really pretty soft, almost looks like um, oil paint. 
I just darkened the edge here a little bit. I'll be using uh, three more brushes for this painting. This will be the next one. This is my number two smallest filbert brush that I have. I'm going to get it a little bit wet to loosen up those bristles. Take some white and I'm just going to start making some more tight little peaks on my clouds. You don't have to stay in any lines. You can be very free with this. You can go over what's already there. You can go a little bit below. I'm going to scumble out the rest of the paint. Now I'm showing you guys lots of layers just because the, the more you see me do these techniques, then the more you'll grasp the concept and, and get that idea. But you can paint a cloud with, you know, half the amount of these layers. You don't have to use all these uh, or apply as many layers as I have here. I think it looks quite um, pretty. So again, just the same technique as when I was using the bigger filbert. I'm just making some tighter, tighter little half circles and little bubbles and peaks. Okay, I'm gonna come in here. really gives us a sense of of light gives our cloud that uh, silver lining right okay and so I'll come in here I'm going to bring this up a little bit higher here. Add a little bit more. So today I've got a quick little video here on how to paint different trees using a few different brushes using the following colors. Brilliant Yellow Green, Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. We're going to be using some Titanium White. I'll also be using some Mars Black and some Burnt Sienna. But of course you can make trees using any other variations of these colors. So I'm going to begin this video with a filbert brush and a liner brush. The first tree I'm going to make is just your typical evergreen tree. So I'm going to use the liner brush first just so that I can make a little tree trunk. I'm going to take a combination of a little bit of water, black, and burnt sienna so you can see that pretty deep dark chocolatey color that we get. And I'll simply just place my pinky here to steady my finger and I'm painting a small tree so that I have enough room to demonstrate a whole bunch of different trees here for you guys. So you can either start your tree trunk at the top or you can push a little. I like to do this push to make it a little bit wider at the bottom and then pull up. Just take a little bit more water on my brush. Okay, so next I'm going to take a little bit of my Hooker's Green Hue, a little bit of that black, a little bit of Burnt Sienna in there, get a nice deep dark color first. Then I'm going to start at the top, the very 
into my brush, very little pressure, and just by tapping and pushing, I can make it. The amount of pressure that I put down on the canvas with a brush will determine the size of branches that I'm getting. So if I barely touch and then I start to turn my brush like this, I can get tiny little ones on the top. I'm gonna use a little bit of that green again without washing my brush and just push till I have a little bit of both greens on the tip of my brush. Now with very little pressure, we're gonna create a bit of a highlight or mid-tone in this case. So I'm gonna just wash all that paint out of my brush. Get it really clean, dry. Get some more of that light green on there. And just for the sake of it, we'll say the light is coming on this side, therefore hitting the branches on this side. So you can add a little highlight like that. So the next tree I want to show you guys is a different kind of a tree that has, I don't know, it could be uh, an apple tree or a big oak tree. And I am going to be using the filbert brush because the tree trunk is a little bit thicker. So I'm pushing gently and then I'm going to just let off. Okay, I'll wash all that out. And now to create some smaller branches, I'm gonna switch over to my liner brush again. Before I do those branches, I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to my burnt sienna. And this time, because it's already lighter on this side, I'm just gonna go with this and create a little highlight and kind of a wiggle. Just to create some highlights here, maybe a little pattern. So when you're painting wet on wet, when the paint is wet underneath that you're applying paint on top, you can kind of just blend that together to get a lighter brown color. We can start adding some branches. And keep in mind, most of these branches are gonna be covered up, but you just wanna wiggle with the tip of your brush like this and now we can come in and start adding the treetops. So I'm gonna use that green again, a little bit of the black to get a nice dark base. And I'm gonna hold my brush like this, push and tap, lifting my brush each time before I tap again. So you're not pulling, pressing and pulling. You definitely wanna get that nice dense looking tree and texture. Make sure you have some here in the front. I like to create my treetops in little sections. We've got a big old oak tree here. We'll just finish the bottom by adding a little bit of grass. Okay, I'm going to wash that paint out and I'm going to go into my light green now for a highlight. And when you're painting wet on wet like this, adding your highlight, you often can get a mid-tone kind of at the same time. You're doing two things at once, which is really nice. So I'm applying it on top and partially above. And I'm just going to add this highlight on all sides, the front and the sides of the tree, just so that I can demonstrate this multiple times for you guys, because the best way to learn is by repetition. So concentrate on my handling of the brush and my brush strokes. So notice how I'm leaving the underneath part dark. You want to have that nice balance of light and shadow so that you can create that realistic, light and dark, making your tree look more 3D. Okay, so for the next tree, I'm gonna demonstrate a weeping willow tree. 
and I'm gonna do the same type of trunk. So again, I've got a clean filbert brush. I'm gonna take my burnt sienna, a little bit of black, and a nice thick base here. I'm going to wash that out and I'm going to switch over to my liner brush now so I can create those highlights and branches. So I'll take a, again a little bit of the burnt sienna and white. Let me just add a little highlight there. We'll clean up this base and camouflage that with some grass in a moment. Okay, for the branches, I'm going to take some black. And I'm not using a lot of water right now because I don't need to spread this paint out very far. So I'm just going to be doing some smaller branches. Push, wiggle, and then pull over. Keep in mind a lot of these uh, branches are going to be hidden. So don't worry too much about trying to make them look perfect. You're not going to uh, be seeing all of that. You're not going to be noticing that maybe they don't look perfect because you've got all of that weeping willow leaves and foliage coming down. So you could just start to pull a little bit here for the beginning stages of those weeping willows. Back over to my filbert and first I'm going to do a light green like this so we get a pretty glow going in the background and I'm just gonna light little pull and flick like this and even if you pick up a little bit of that brown that's gonna make it look a bit more natural next time you look at a weeping willow tree you'll notice that there's little bits of yellowy brown in there and i'm going to start to tap here in the front because i don't want to smear completely smear that tree trunk but i think one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're painting trees is that they forget about the front of the tree if they're just thinking about the sides and the top and they think they can't go over top of their tree trunk but you know, realistically, you guys, the foliage on the tree is coming around from the top, draping in front, the sides, and the back. So even if it feels awkward and a little bit scary doing that, you really have to. So I'm just going to, any kind of little wiggle or tap here, kind of get this light green down here at the base. And I'm going to go right in to a little bit of black and green. And I'm going to start tapping. So you can do a little tap and a slight little pull. I'm going to take a little bit of my light green now. I don't want to over blend too much. So you could wait until your tree trunk is dry, but in this case, you can see that it's not really necessary. <clears throat> you don't have to. And you can bring down your willows as far as you want. So I like to do these little scumbles and pulls. And then if you feel like you maybe brought them down a little bit too low. If you catch it, <clears throat> excuse me, if you catch it right away, you can take it off. So I'm just going to go back 
here into my light green. Maybe take a little bit of white. Make this stand out just a little bit more here. Just tap. You want to have the paint on the tip of your brush because that's the only part of the brush that we're using at this point. Next tree that I want to show you is a palm tree. So I'm going to be using my liner brush first to create the palm tree tree trunk. I'm going to use black and my brown. And I'm going to go and put this on an angle, have it a big sweeping palm tree right here. Narrower at the top and then wider at the base. I'm going to go into my burnt sienna white. So you could add your highlights using this brush. And then you could also use your filbert brush. Take a little bit of my white on the very tip. Hold my brush like this, pull to create those lines and pattern that a palm tree has. Take a little bit more white this time. Could even come down from this side. I'll just clean this up a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna go into my black and my darker green. See how I'm pushing like that? Kind of fans that brush out a little bit. And you're just gonna make a bunch of arches like this. I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush to loosen that paint up and then that way I can just line my brush up and do light little pulls and flicks like this and that will give it that feathery palm leaf look. And then when you get to the end of the palm leaf, you can turn your brush to make it a little bit pointier. I'm gonna have one come right from the center here in front and cover up the top of my tree trunk. So you just want that black base first, that dark green with the black, so we can have some nice contrast and some highlights. We'll be able to make some highlights in a minute here. And I'll just take a little bit of my light green on the very tip of my brush. You can do this when your palm leaves are wet or if they're dry. So I'm going to do not apply a lot of pressure and just pick a few. I'm not going to highlight every single one. And it's kind of nice because it's something that you can kind of just go back over. If you happen to add a little bit too much, then you can even add other ones in between those existing palm leaves, making it look a little bit thicker. So here's an example of what not to do. I pulled a little bit too much off of there and you can see 
how the difference. So if you were just to add green, light green over the white base, you're not gonna get that 3D look, three-dimensional. You need that dark base underneath. I'm gonna push a little bit of that off there. And I'll make another little palm leaf right here. You can also kind of just cut in like this and make more singular ones. Okay, so for my next tree, I'll demonstrate how to paint uh, some birch trees. So I'm gonna take some black first with my liner brush and start pulling some lines for my tree trunk. I'll have another one really close to it. And then I'll start to pull. I'm gonna get a bit of water on my brush here. Start to pull our branches up. Right where we left off for our tree trunk, we're gonna gently and gradually add some little branches from there. Okay, now I'm going to take some white and I'm just going to drag and then pull. So you're going to have quite a bit on your brush. Drag like you would use a palette knife and then kind of pull little lines in some areas. So you get that, because it's really, the bark is like this paper on the outside that starts to peel off and it's, it just wraps around the tree trunk and it's, you want to create that, um, the direction that it's going in so to make it, it kind of looks round, it gives it that round look. So you would do these lines and I'll do the same thing. over on this one and in some areas you can use more white but obviously you want to have a darker base first especially working on a white canvas you're putting painting white right on white it's not gonna you're not gonna get that it's not gonna show up right so we need this dark base under here. Now you could use gray. And then cleaning the white on my brush and getting a little bit of my black on here. I'm gonna pick a few areas to add some little, almost like oval shapes, little dabs. just here and there. Okay, and now we'll work on the foliage. And of course, all of these trees can be painted with a few different brushes, but for today's video, and because I really enjoy using the filbert brush, I wanted to make this video all about how to paint these trees with a filbert brush. So I'm going to take my green, a little bit of black. I don't want to have too much water. I've got a little bit too much water in my brush, so I'm going to just wipe that off on my little towel. And I'm just going to do little sections. You can turn your brush. See, sometimes if I want my foliage to look like kind of rounded like that, then I'll use it this way, kind of get that half moon shape that the filbert brush has. Or you can turn it this way. Okay, 
and get a different shape to your tree or your treetops and leaves. And I'll just do that a little bit more here. These are looking a little bit sparse. I don't want them to be too light. Otherwise, my highlights won't show up. Remember to go over part of your tree trunk. Okay, now I'm going to take my light green. I'm going to take a little bit of white with it just so that it shows up a little bit better. Here we'll just blend and mix it up and then I want to tap to load my brush to get it to look kind of separated and poofy like that. So we'll pick a few sections. Again, a little bit more of the white. We'll add a little bit of grassy area down here. Okay, so I've got a little bit of room here. I'm trying to think of other trees right now. I wasn't anticipating on having this much room, but that's good because um, I'm having fun with this and I'd love to show you guys different techniques and things that you haven't uh, seen or learned before. Um, so, hmm. What about, and I don't know what the trees are called, but um, like when you um, see pictures of Africa and like the Serengeti, there's like, yeah, sorry guys, maybe you can leave it in the comments below. I'm sure I know what they're called, I just can't uh, think of it. So I'm going to do this uh, mainly in silhouette. I'm thinking about an uh, African sunset that I painted years ago with an elephant in it. And of course the trees, they're low. They don't have a tall, tall tree trunk. And I'll paint a few of these. So kind of short and squat little trees. These are really fun little trees to paint. I'll add a little bit of grass and whatnot down here. Take a little bit of my burnt sienna. I might change it from silhouette to, well, I'll show you both. I can do it in silhouette first and then add some light on it after. I'm gonna switch on over to my liner brush to do the branches. So they kind of grow flat out there on the top, which is really neat. So I'm just going to paint some wiggly branches that come out on both sides, and then they come up a little bit here, but not. They kind of remind they kind of remind me of uh, those bonsai trees. Speaking of bonsai trees, my son and daughter-in-law got me um, a bonsai tree growing kit. Uh, for Christmas and I've been a little bit late in getting it started and I started it a week and a half ago and I was so excited this morning to see it uh, one of them sprouting up already or two of them actually I'm really really excited because I've uh, I've heard that they can be tricky so I'm gonna make this this branch is really wiggly and I'm just pulling and then using the tip of my brush where I want to have smaller ones and then we'll bring up a few just a little bit here okay and now I'll add the tree tops so I'm going to do this like I said in silhouette first taking my brown but mostly black 
and we're not going to make these come up too high and we're going to have them quite see-through so we're going to have these little sections and tap 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 this is when uh, the filter brush is really handy for painting these types of trees it's the, i would say the perfect brush to use bushes down here too. That's what they would look like in silhouette. Now I can add green without washing my brush off. Mix those colors up. Both greens with the remainder of the paint in my brush. And we can take this from silhouette sunset time of day and change the time of day and the lighting just by tapping over So I could add another highlight with my bright green here and a little bit of white. Okay, I don't want to have my brush too saturated. So we'll just pick a few spots here. Now that this has had time to dry, I can also come back and add a few more highlights. And the same with this one. I'm thinking of um, those trees that you see in a typical Tuscany villa uh, landscape. So we can paint those. And what I'll do is make a little road first, just so that we can kind of get that feeling. And I've got the room, so I'll start low down here. Got our little Italian Tuscan villa waiting for us back there. Okay, we'll just have a little road here. We'll just soften this a little bit. Okay, and then with my filbert brush, I'm gonna take a bit of black with my green and I'll start small. We're just going to make little carrots, green carrots that are going to get a bit bigger. And then as they get bigger, you can start tapping. So yeah, these ones that are far away, right? They're going to just be little lines like that. You can also scumble little circles just 
Don't forget about your shadows. I'll do a few back here in the distance. Maybe we've got our vineyard back here. I know I'm getting carried away, but I've got the room. Okay, so now to highlight, go into our light green. And we'll tap. I'm probably tapping on the wrong side, but I just want to show you guys how you can highlight. I need a little bit more room here. So I'm choosing this side. This is going to dry a little bit darker. I think I'm going to put one here in front of this because I read that one a little bit too wide. So you can come and you can overlap like that. I'm going to need a little bit more of my Highlight. Okay, so just little lines like this for those ones maybe in the distance. Okay, guys, so there was just a extra one just because I had the room there, extra set of trees. I don't know what they're called. I can't remember. I'll call them Tuscan trees <laughs> for now. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye!